Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back, and welcome to my reading year in review, which is a video that I made last year and thought I would make again this year in order to pay tribute to all of the books that I read in 2018. So without further ado, here are all of this year's bookish superlatives. My most recommended book of 2018 was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which I not only recommended to the most people, but which I also gave as a gift more than any other book this year. My favorite new author author goes to the queen Eileen Chang. This year I read Half a Lifelong Romance, Love in a Fallen City, and Lust Caution, and each of her stories manages to be glamorous and cinematic and also dark and devastating. Best writing goes to Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton and South and West by Joan Didion. Most exquisite goes to The White Book by Han Kong. Most charming protagonist goes to Anne from Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Mont Montgomery. Most unlikable protagonist goes to the narrator from My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. Most thought-provoking goes to Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, which is a book that I am still thinking about six months after I read it. Funniest goes to Meaty by Samantha Irby. Best New Discovery goes to Barracoon, The Story of the Last Black Cargo by Zora Neale Hurston, which was finally published this year and which offers a different kind of perspective on the institution of slavery in America. Best addition to a high school syllabus goes to Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, which is also the book that I am most surprised has not yet been made into a movie. Best collection of short stories goes to The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. Best graphic memoir goes to The Best We Could Do by T. Bui, which admittedly did not have much competition this year, but which I really enjoyed. Best book about sports goes to Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese, which is about a lot more than just sports, but which features some sublime descriptions of hockey. Most timely goes to Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger by Rebecca Traister. Best book for becoming a better citizen goes to An Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. Most impressive rhetoric goes to Regarding the Pain of Others by Susan Sontag because she certainly knows how to craft a sentence. The most essential read for lovers of translated fiction goes to The Fall of Language in the Age of English by Minae Mizumura. The most convincing case for staying in on a Saturday night goes to Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World that Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. Best book about Middle America goes to Janesville, an American Story by Amy Goldstein, which is rigorous and empathetic without romanticizing Middle America. The best grasp on the minutia of commercial Bible production goes to Severance by Ling Ma. The most surreal read was The Sorrow of War by Bao Nin. The most psychologically dense read was Troubling Love by Elena Ferrante. The most claustrophobic book was Sing Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward. Most Orwellian goes to The Accusation by Bondi. The creepiest read was All Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. The bleakest read was Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. And the most sobering reads were Men We Reaped by Jesmyn Ward and Like Eating a Stone Surviving the Past in Bosnia by Wojciech Tokman. Coldest Prose goes to Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata, and I'm stealing that from an article I read about his work which described his writing as a cold garden of prose, which is just so apt. Slowest read was Blood's Black Veterans of the Vietnam War and Oral History by Wallace Terry, which took me a while to get through but was ultimately a very rewarding read. Most successful emotional manipulation goes to I'll Be Right There by Kyung Suk Shin. Most reminiscent of first-person internet writing goes to All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. Books I've changed my mind about the most since reading them goes to Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tian, which I found quite exhausting while I was reading it, but which I have since thought a lot about and been very grateful for having read. And on the flip side of that, Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, which I thought was fine when I read it, but which has since fallen in my estimation and become more annoying to me over time. The most readable classic was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. The most tedious classic was The Awakening by Kate Chopin. The best overlooked classic was No No Boy by John Okada. And the best retelling of a classic was A True Novel by Minae Mizumura, which was a retelling of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights set in post-war Japan. The best romance was Normal People by Sally Rooney. The saddest 
finest romance was Pavane for a Dead Princess by Park Min Gyu, which was also the only book to make me cry in 2018. The most swoon-worthy romance goes to Certain Chapters of Becoming by Michelle Obama. The most predictable romance goes to The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. The least convincing romance was North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. The best book to read if romance is not a priority in your life right now was All the Single Ladies, Unmarried Women, and the Rise of an Independent Nation by Rebecca Traster. And now getting into the negative energy section of the list, the most promising premise that ultimately failed to deliver was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite, and The Line Becomes a River Dispatches from the Border by Francisco Cantu. Two books that could have been a lot better than they actually were. Most forgettable goes to Hard Boiled and Hard Luck by Banana Yoshimoto, Heartberries by Therese Marie Mayotte, and No One Writes Back by Jong Eun Jin. Most Eyes Rolled While Reading It goes to Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Least Filial goes to Inheritance from Mother by Minae Mizumura. Worst Writing goes to This Will Only Hurt a Little by Busy Phillips. Sorry, Busy, I still love you. Worst Use of Quantum Physics to Resolve a Convoluted Plot goes to A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. And the worst book of the year goes to Nellie Dean, A Return to Wuthering Heights by Allison Case, which was just a disaster. Those were all of the books that I read in the past year. I hope that you all had a fruitful and rewarding reading year, and I will see you in 2019. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!